Thanks, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm, I'm Dan Truparkoff, and I'm from a company called Big Panda. I'll talk a tiny bit about that, but I'll try to not make this a marketing pitch at all. I'm going to talk about how we use chat ops, how it makes our team bigger, how it, um, how it helps us automate and scale uh, the ops that we're trying to do every day. So first, uh, as she said, I'm Dan Chuparkoff. Uh, this is me. I'm Director of Growth and Engagement uh, at Big Panda, and that's my wife. Uh, and before Big Panda, I used to work at Atlassian, so hopefully there's some Jira and HipChat fans in the room. Uh, so first, I'll talk a little bit about my exposure to ops in the past. It, it started on February 1st, 2009, and I know that specific date. Um, it's like burned in my mind forever. This is the day I learned what, what chat ops was, but more specifically, here's what happened. So I was working at a team that was working on a, a pretty cool project for Universal Studios. And the result of that project was this, I'll show you. Your inner hero is calling. Answer. At the one place where you can all feel superhuman again, Universal Orlando Resort. Okay, does anybody remember this commercial? Okay, awesome. So first, what does that have to do with ops, right? Nothing, right? I actually chopped the last second and a half off of this commercial. The last second and a half went like this. Visit UniversalHeroes.com for a free seven-day ticket. Okay, so this aired for the first time on Super Bowl Sunday at halftime, February 1st, 2009. So that year, 140 million people were watching the Super Bowl at halftime moment. So 140 million people heard me say, come to our website, we'll give you a free trip to Florida. Right Now, can anyone guess what percentage of 140 million people will come to a website for a chance to win a seven day trip to Florida? Okay, actually, we have no idea because everything broke, everything broke. <laughs> Um, the, yeah, there a DNS, uh, the DNS resolution wasn't working, uh, the load balancers failed, like everything crashed, right? So uh, tons and tons of people came, uh, all tried to register for this promotion, everything crashed. We're on the phone with like Universal Studios, CTO, and like 100 million other people, and, and uh, they're like, what the hell's going on? You guys need to fix this soon. Uh, and so then they said, hey, our parent company is NBC, and NBC airing the Super Bowl. So they're like, I bet NBC will give us another chance. So they said, hey, good news. In another quarter of football, you get another chance to air this promotion. So just fix it all before that happens, right? So we're all like watching TV on the corner, and meanwhile, we're like all trying to, we're trying to like deploy more servers. We were taking stuff off of production servers, like just deleting it and putting this on instead and letting those other things fail well for a little while, right? <laughs> meanwhile, like everyone in the whole company is trying to like deploy new servers, and actually it was at Rackspace um, was our hosting provider at the time. But anyway, so we're all deploying more stuff, and chat was the way that we all kept in sync. Uh, a quarter of football is elapsing and we're trying to get stuff <laughs> redeployed and, and up and running and working. And we're all like, you know, watching football and call, uh, hoping they call a timeout, like to just give us like another 30 seconds. Um, ultimately, the next commercial aired and still half our stuff was halfway put together. Uh, but uh, the next time it aired, we gave away 100,000 free trips to Florida in 42 seconds, um, which was pretty kick-ass. And so at that moment, like that was a pivotal moment in ops for me because when I noticed that, like one, our infrastructures were going to need to be a lot more dynamic in the future, right? Like if what I really wanted was when my load balancers started to fail, I wanted it to automatically deploy new servers for me, right? I shouldn't have had to call up random project managers and have them running scripts that they had no business running, right? So that was one thing. And the second thing I noticed is that our teams were really, really distributed and chat was the one thing that helped us pull all together. So like that was the moment we sort of stopped relying on email a little bit and started shifting more toward real chat engagement. Okay, so all of that was like six years ago. Now I'm at a place called Big Panda. Um, Big Panda is, uh, are, we are attempting to automate and scale incident management for op teams. So all our ops teams have, 
you know, Nagios running and App Dynamics and Splunk and Isinga and, and Zabbix and a million different things that are helping you monitor the health of your organization. Big Panda pulls it all together into one centralized place. So it's pretty cool. You should check it out. Bigpanda.io is the URL. And I'll answer questions after the presentation more specifically about what we do. This is what it looks like. All of these are incidents, right? So a bunch of alerts together all make this incident. So Big Panda will read Nagios automatically and cluster related things together. It's pretty kick-ass. OK, so with that out of the way, let me jump over to what we're doing. You know, we have a relatively small team. And on this team, there's only one guy that's really our ops team, right? But like, he can't do everything, right? So the way we help scale what Hagai can work on is by involving the whole rest of the team. And we involve the whole rest of the team in troubleshooting using chat as our mechanism. So here's how that works. So five steps to uh, chat opsing, just like Big Panda. Um, so the first thing is get chat, right? Is, who here is using HipChat already? All right. And who here is using Slack? Yeah, all right, all right. Um, so it really, really doesn't matter. I don't care. I'm not at Atlassian anymore, so I don't care which one you get. Um, I like HipChat better. But um, so get get HipChat. Um, or, or get Slack. That's sort of the entry level, right? Just about everybody here has some sort of chat. Um, so the rest of this presentation is going to be about sort of taking it beyond where, where you're just using it for basic communication. So the second thing is um, one of the best things about uh, HipChat is that rooms persist even if some of the people aren't online, right? So like a bunch of people uh, on my development team can be having a conversation uh, in the middle of the night when I'm sleeping, and then I wake up in the morning and I see the whole entire thread, right? So chat rooms really, really help to uh, take communication and allow it to happen asynchronously, which is really important today. Chat rooms are your uh, central uh, point of communication. My biggest, biggest recommendation is don't create a million of them, right? Create a small number of rooms. Ideally, what you're aiming for is no more rooms than can fit on your screen, right? If, you, if your users have to keep scrolling up and down all day long, they're, they're not going to see urgent things, right? So, so pick yourself a half a dozen or 10 rooms and try to limit, try to limit it to that. Um, I'll talk about the, the actual rooms that we use uh, at Big Panda. So this is, this is how we're using uh, HipChat and rooms to communicate around what's going on in ops. We have an, a one room for operations, one room for alerts, support, GitHub stuff, daily, which is kind of cool, I'll talk about in a second, and then pictures of cats. Those things in a little bit more detail. So operations, what's going on in this room uh, won't quite make sense until I give you a few more slides. Uh, but what you should know is that this is the t communication about all of our continuous integration and continuous deployment stuff. Um, anything, that's, uh, anything that's getting done to servers is, is happening and communicated on in this room. Alerts is another big one. So what we want ultimately is not a person who's on call and carries a pager around in the middle of the night, right? We want a central repository where all of our communication is happening, right? That's the whole point of Big Panda in the first place, right? So we want to make sure that our chat op strategy follows that same philosophy. Um, now, this is a little bit of a placeholder for us right now because our alerts chat room, uh, uh, we are currently working on integration between HipChat and Slack and Big Panda. So ultimately, what we want is alerts from Nagios to come in, get consolidated into a smaller number of incidents. And then we want those incidents to be communicated uh, throughout our team. So we're working on HipChat and Slack integration, and that'll be uh, available soon. Support is the next room that we all collaborate around. So we have uh, customers, and they have requests, and they uh, have confusion, and they have questions, and all of those things come to us through support. Uh, we're using Intercom as our support ticket catcher. I don't know if anybody's tried Intercom yet, but it's pretty cool. Check it out if you haven't yet. Um, so Intercom tickets are coming in all day, and those tickets are getting assigned to people, and people are working in Intercom. But also, every time those things happen, it gets added to this thread in, uh, in HipChat. So all of us that aren't manning support tickets all day can still come to this and get an overview of what's going on day to day. So it's, it's pretty cool.
GitHub is the next room, and this is pretty critically important. Um, so we have GitHub connected to HipChat. So everything uh, that's happening when we, you know, we push new commits, um, when we do builds, uh, all of that is available. All of our interaction with GitHub is logged and communicated to the whole team here so they can all see exactly what's going on um, without having to dig for it. Next, we're using uh, a room which we call daily for uh, stand-ups. Really, it's really an asynchronous stand-up meeting, right? All these people can comment about what they're working on for the day, and it doesn't all have to happen in the same five-minute period. This is really cool because at Big Panda, we're in two different countries. Uh, half of our team is in Israel, half of them are here in Mountain View. And it's really, really cool for some of us who are sleeping in the middle of the night when they have this stand-up to be able to take a look at that and see what's going on. It also takes a 10-minute stand-up and turns it into a 30-second stand-up, which is pretty cool. So that's daily. Uh, finally, we do have a, a room dedicated to just blowing off steam, right? Like sometimes we do find pictures of cats. We want to make sure that our GitHub room is just GitHub stuff and it doesn't have a bunch of pictures of cats in it. Uh, we want to still give ourselves some sort of outlet uh, for, for screwing around sometimes. That's critically important. So next, once you have chat, another prerequisite of the Big Panda style of chat opsing is uh, to get Ansible, or Chef, or Puppet, or Salt, or whatever you, you like better. But um, we like Ansible, especially for ops, um, for a couple of reasons. One, it's the depotence that allows us to run Ansible playbooks over and over again without breaking anything new. It gives us the ability to automate the fixing of some problems, um, because we can run stuff over and over again without breaking anything new. If we run some deploy thing, uh, and it was already run before and doesn't need to be deployed again, Ansible will, will it just, it won't do any, it won't hurt anything. And that's really, really important because ultimately what Big Panda is going for is a world in which problems can automatically heal themselves, right? And Ansible's impotence helps us uh, ensure that when we get to that place at some point in the future, we'll be able to run these things over and over again as many times as we want without hurting anything. So Ansible works for us. We like it a lot. We use it for all of our server provisioning, all our server orchestration, and all of our application deployment. And when I say all of it, we even things that we set up already manually when we were first getting started, we've now redeployed using Ansible just to ensure that there is no server in our infrastructure that's not exactly the same and exactly the way we designed it. Right. So Ansible uh, helps us do that. You could do it with you know, chef recipes or, or whatever works for your infrastructure. But the important thing is uh, have some sort of an automation layer in what you're doing physically to servers. Um, you can see what we're doing uh, at Big Panda uh, in our GitHub account. Um, so we've exposed most of our Ansible playbooks and things like that uh, at GitHub Big Panda IO. Uh, okay, next. Fourth, uh, Hubot. Is anyone using Hubot yet? Awesome. And a small number. So you should check this, check Hubot out. It's really, really cool. It allows you to very, very easily create a bot that's hooked up to chat. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Essentially, Hubot is just a listener, and it's, it's looking at all the ta text that happens in a room. Uh, when it finds something like the word problem, it can do something like send a picture of a troll face, right? Anytime somebody says, hey, I think there's a problem, troll face, right? That, that happens over and over again. You can also do much more useful things, which I'll show you in a second. Um, so to get Hubot, uh, it's at GitHub. Hubot, and then uh, there's a Hubot HipChat connector, uh, which is fairly easy to set up. Um, so get those two things, and you will have a huge library of already developed Hubot scripts um, that will easily connect to your HipChat instance. There's also one for Slack, so you could you could do that. Okay, so then once you have a bot, then you're going to start thinking of some unique things that only apply to your infrastructure. Uh, so then you're going to want to customize it. And that's what we've done with Beanbot. So Beanbot at Big Panda is our customized version of Hubot. And can anybody imagine why we called it Beanbot? Any Ender's Game fans anywhere? So, right, Bean is Ender's trusty sidekick. 
wouldn't go anywhere without him, and being bot is that same thing to us, right? So being bot is extremely helpful. Uh, he does a lot of things for us within our network. So I'll show you what. So the first thing we wanted to do is make the scariest part of doing builds the easiest. What I mean by that is, you know, we you do all this you do all this work to get code released and like a hundred people look at it and there's peer reviews and multiple people helping everyone solve problems and then you go to deploy stuff to some server and like no one really looked at the stuff the ops guy did when he was deploying it like who knows there could be some servers that aren't in sync um, and so we wanted to make sure that that was never a possibility and so we use uh, Beanbot and Whobot and Ansible together to make sure it's as simple as saying deploy Big Panda and it will go to GitHub and get the latest version as long as it's all okay. Um, it will pull the code down, it'll push it all to the right servers, it'll make sure that all the prerequisites are done. Um, because we've looked at that Ansible playbook and we've peer reviewed it and QA'd it and run it a hundred times, so we know it's going to work flawlessly every time. So when we say deploy Big Panda or deploy Docs or deploy any of the modules we have within our software base, we know that it's going to work flawlessly every time. And now that we've hooked it up to chat, we can make it so that even our ops guy doesn't SSH to servers ever. So no one touches servers anymore. Everything goes through Ansible. And no one touches Ansible because everything goes through Beanbot. Right? So here's how that works. So we would type in, in HipChat, we would type this exactly. Right? So we ask Beanbot to get the changes um, from Big Panda data API. So Beanbot will then look in GitHub. It'll tell us exactly who's changed what, what's still outstanding, what's on production, what's not. Literally looks like this. So Shai said, hey, Beanbot, get me the changes. Beanbot replies with the changes. Um, it's really, really cool to, for knowing exactly what's, what's new on the infrastructure, what's been deployed, and what hasn't. Uh, you can also, uh, that was changes. So first I looked at changes using the Beanbot big panda changes command, and then I have an alternate one. If everything is OK and ready, I say beanbot deploy data API, and it gets the code out of GitHub. It you know, runs our Ansible scripts, does everything, gets it all the way running. Um, I can run this as many times as I want, and it won't run if it's not allowed to run, if the stuff's not ready to go, if it hasn't passed all the unit tests, if the Ansible script is missing any prerequisites. Um, so it's pretty cool. It's made. All of our ops stuff, very, very fail safe. Uh, it, it's helped us enable um, complete synchronization of our infrastructure. Every server looks exactly the way we want. All of this is you know, what it looks like. You say you know, Beanbot deploy data API, and it starts a build. You know, it, uh, it gives you the log. It, it'll tell you in big red text if it failed. The user that called the command is logged so that we still have accountability for the people that did it. All works flawlessly, and we use it every day. So this is sort of how things work. Um, our own team always talks with HipChat. Uh, HipChat always talks to Beanbot. Beanbot talks to Ansible, and Ansible pushes stuff to servers. Um, so this is our SSH-free uh, infrastructure management plan, and all of it is connected through HipChat. So all of us can look at HipChat and see the GitHub thread, see the operations thread. Um, we, we can see what code has been deployed. We can always look and see when code was deployed. So if we have some new Nagios alert going off all of a sudden that wasn't there before, we can look at the operations thread and see, oh, look, Shy just deployed code. Right? So uh, it really, really helps us give the accountability and really shortens our you know, mean time to respond because we can easily see exactly what changed on every single server. So that's how that all goes together. Um, so I started, I started this story you know, talking about the one ops guy. And everybody here knows you know, being on call, being on call sucks. Right? There's a lot of people saying, hey, let's make on call suck less. In, you know, prior to being at Big Panda, I, was, I spent a lot of time in the Agile project management space. And since 2000, you know, the Agile movement has, about, has been about distributing accountability. Right? The whole team is in charge of making sure everything is fine. Right? It's not a guy's job to make sure that Big Panda doesn't fail. Right? It's all of our job to make sure Big Panda doesn't fail. So don't try to make on-call suck less. Right? Just stop doing it that way. It's about team accountability now. And Big Panda helps do that with chat. So 
that's all I've got. Thank you very much for giving me the chance to speak. And if anyone has any questions, come find me after. <laughs> <laughs>